by now to be teachers, to be prophets, to be elders, to be evangelists. Most people have done it some time ago. Let us forget about sometimes. Let us put their fears about our jobs, our problems, our situation. And each and every one of us here have problems and situations that we need to consider. Let us put it a blessed foot behind us. Because the Bible says that many are the afflictions of the righteous. And the Lord saves him from it all. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Open your Bibles, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 24 to 28. Verse 2, yeah. Hebrews chapter 9, verse number 24 to 28. 28. Mm -hmm. For Christ did not, did not enter a sanctuary made with human hands. That was only a copy of the true one. Mm -hmm. He entered heaven itself. Mm -hmm. Now to appear for us in God's presence. Nor did he enter heaven to offer himself again and again. Mm -hmm. The way the high priest entered the most holy place every year with blood, that is not his own. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, Christ would have had suffered many times since the creation of the world. Mm -hmm. But he has appeared once for all at the culmination of the ages to do away with sin by the, sac by the sacrifice of himself. Mm -hmm. Just as people are destined to die once and after that to face judgment. So Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of men. And he will appear a second time, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The Bible is trying to tell us that we do not need, or it's not our responsibility to crucify Christ again. Because Christ came and he died for once. As is appointed unto man to die once and after death judgment. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When Christ comes again, it means that he is going to judge us. We are going to be held accountable for our deeds. So let us not try to crucify him again by sin, by drawing away our mind from the things of the Lord. Because we can't crucify him. If we Christians, then we call ourselves believers. If we engage ourselves in such acts, it means that we are trying to crucify Christ. And no one on this earth can crucify him again. But though we are bringing judgment unto ourselves. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And let's not bring judgment unto ourselves by crucifying him again and putting him in a what? In an open shade. And it's not meant for us. And let's prevent that. And let's try as much as possible to do things pertaining to what to God. So that you will end up what being blessed. Open your Bibles to Hebrews 6, verse 4. Yeah. Hebrews chapter 6, verse number 4. 4. Yeah. It is impossible for those who have once been enlightened, mm -hmm. who have tasted the heavenly gift, mm -hmm. who have shared in the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, move, move, move down. Verse 5, who mm -hmm. have tasted the goodness of the word of God mm -hmm. and the powers of the coming age, and who have fallen away to be brought back to repentance. Hallelujah, it's okay. The Bible says in verse 4 that every for it is impossible for those who were enlightened. When you say enlightened, you were, you were in the dark, and you came out from the what? Darkness. You came into the light, you saw the light, you tasted the light, you know the importance. Or the necessity for you to be in the light. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So in that case, it is impossible for those who are enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift. When you say someone has tasted the heavenly gift, it means that the person knows that he has eternal life. So anytime he becomes happy, the person knows within his soul that he is being saved. That's why the Bible is saying that those who have tasted what heavenly gifts and who are partakers of the Holy Spirit, you are able to speak in tongues. You are able to amend reason, good reason. You, every fruit of the Holy Spirit, you are, you have some. Anything concerning the Holy Spirit, I mean, you have seen it and you have seen it well. And it, and it goes on for us to say that and have 
tested the good word of God. When we say the good word of God, when we read Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, he says that the word of God is living and is powerful than the two edged sword. Piercing. Let us think to it very clearly. Piercing to the soul and the bone, the joint, and the marrow. And it's able to discern our thoughts and, the, and, what, and our intents of the heart. The intent of the heart is the most important thing. We have tasted the word of God. We know how powerful the word of God is. The word of God is very powerful to the extent that we have tasted and we know that whenever we are going the wrong way, whenever we have bad intentions, whenever our hearts yearn for things, things of the world, the word of God stands in and correct us and prevent us from what? Going astray. We have tasted that. So it is impossible for those people, for us in Christ, to go or to look back into the world and repent once again. Do not look back into the world. Do not go back into the world. Do not lay, lay away all these good gifts, all these good situations, all these good scenarios and head back into the world. It is not going to send us anywhere. It is not going to help us. Let us focus. Let us have our minds on the things of the Lord. That is the only, that is only what is going to help us. Achieve whatever you want, you want to achieve in this world. Hallelujah. Amen. Continue. Continue from 6. Mm -hmm. Verse 4. Okay, you read Ephesians 4, verse 17 to 19. Ephesians 4, verse 17 to 19. So I tell you this, and insist on it in the Lord that, mm -hmm. in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do, mm -hmm. in the futility of their thinking. Mm -hmm. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity, mm -hmm. and they are full of greed. Amen. Amen. This is talking about enlightenment. We have seen, we have tasted the world, and we have tasted the light, and we know the, what the good things of the light. And henceforth, we, are, we do not walk in the ways of the Gentiles. We do not walk in the ways of the, of the, of the world. We are supposed to walk in the path of righteousness. When we do that, we do not crucify him once again and put him into an open shame. The Lord do not expect him to do that. The Lord do not expect you to crucify him once again. The Lord expects him to be mature. The Lord expects him to move forward in, in strength and in what? Move forward in growth and in strength. Hallelujah. Because this is what Jesus is looking for, looking from us. We are not supposed to crucify him once again. If we do that, it means that we are what? We are putting whatever works that he did in vain. And he doesn't care because the time is coming. He will come. Let me put this way as a wounded lion for that matter. And he is going to judge us. We are going to what? Help accountable. Of. So whenever we are doing things that pertains to God, don't say, I am doing it for this body. I'm doing it for this person. No. It is for your own righteousness. It is for your own salvation. It is for your own eternity. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's read verse 6 to 7 to 8. Chapter 6. Continue from verse 6 to 8. No, Hebrews. Hebrews. Chapter 6 verse, yeah. verse 7 to Yeah. To 8. Mm-hmm. 
in the end it will be burned. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This 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 scripture is a parable. It is trying as much as possible to let us capture something. For example, if I am a farmer and I grow crops, and the crops what germinate, and I sell the crops, and, and, it, and it benefits people, it means that I'm a blessed what farmer. Hallelujah. Amen. But if I grow crops and it doesn't germinate, and even if it germinates, it brings I mean problems, it brings trouble. I can't cultivate it at all. Then it means that I am a cursed farmer, right? The same thing happens to we Christians. If you are self right of the Lord and personal Savior, you sit in the house of the Lord. You sit under the what? Under the umbrella of the Lord. You partake in the Holy Spirit. You tasted the heavenly gift. You tasted the powerful word of God. And you do not bear good fruit. For people to benefit from it. But you rather become a curse unto people. You rather influence people negatively. You rather whisper into people's ears. Things that are what? That, that Paul will say foolishness. Then it means that you are being cursed. Rather than what? Being what? Being beneficial unto the, unto the people of what? Of God. It's our responsibility to bear good fruit. It's our responsibility to germinate and grow so that people around us, society will benefit from us rather than being a cursed person. So that people will, what, will also end up being cursed. That is not a responsibility. If we do that, it means perfectly that we are crucifying Christ again. Because Christ do not want us to do so. Christ wants us to be mature. He wants us to move forward. He do not want us to what? To move neither left nor right. Let's look straight. Let's move forward. And let us not crucify him once again. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. In conclusion, how can we fall away and crucify him again? Let's open our Bibles to Acts chapter 8, verse 21. Acts 8. That will be the last but one quotation. Acts chapter 8, verse, verse 21. 21. Mm -hmm. He said, you have no part or share in this ministry mm -hmm. because your heart is not right before God. Amen. Amen. Because of the time, when you get the time, just read it all. Someone tried, I mean, to buy the Holy Spirit with money. And the most important thing here is the heart of the people. The eyes of the Lord is going to and fro, searching for those who hearts are perfect towards the Lord, so that He is going to show Himself strong to them. The most important thing here is the heart. The problem here is what? The heart. Whenever we try to crucify Jesus again, it means that we have a problem with our heart. When are we? When are we trying? When are we going to try to open up our heart? To clear our heart from all iniquities, from all things of the world, open it more naturally and receive things of Christ. Let us not receive two things at a time: things of the world and things in Christ. Let us, let us, let us always receive only one thing: that is Christ. Hallelujah! Amen. And if the heart, if the heart becomes what Cor corruptible, then it means that. Though we will be in the church, but our minds it is somewhere else. That is why they say the renewal of the mind out of abundance of the heart, the mouth was speaking. When the heart captures something, it goes straight into the mind. Hallelujah. And the, and the heart and the mouth was speaking that thing. Then it means that whatever that we do, it pertains to the heart. Anything that comes from heart, any fruit that we develop comes from the heart. So when we try as much as possible to open up our heart, to fill our heart with the word of God, to fill our heart with things pertaining with, to the Holy Spirit, with things pertaining to the, uh, uh, to, uh, to the works of the Lord, it means that we are giving ourselves a way 
for the crucifixion of Jesus not to be in vain. Hallelujah. We are giving ourselves a way not to crucify him again. So there are all these problems that Christians fall away. Christians, I mean, repent negatively. Is that our, the, our heart is not yearning for the things of God. How can someone who has seen the power of the Holy Ghost try to use money to buy something from the uh, uh, use money to buy the Holy Ghost? It is not possible. So Peter said that things of the heart, your heart is not perfect, perfect towards the Lord. So the Lord is not going to, I mean, give you that gift. What do, what, what do we look for as Christians? Sometimes you see someone, I mean, be filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. Be filled with what? Uh, with the word of God. Be filled with what? With the miracles. And, and it, it, seems like, it seems like we, 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 we want that gift. We cannot use the money to buy the gift. We need to have an open heart so that the Lord can search our hearts and know that, no, this guy, if I give him this gift, it's going to be beneficial to my people. And upon that, he will give you that gift. But if he searches your heart and he sees that, no, this boy's heart or this girl's heart is not clean to be able to receive that gift, he will not give you that gift. Hallelujah. Amen. So everything in Christianity concerns the heart. It's the heart that brings out all the fruits. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's read the last quotation. Hebrews chapter 13. Verse 9. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 9. Hebrews chapter 13, verse number 9. Do not be carried away by all kinds of strange teachings. Mm -hmm. It is good for our heart to be strengthened by grace, mm -hmm. not by eating ceremonial foods, mm -hmm. which is of no benefit to those who do so. Amen. Amen. You see, the Bible, everything pertaining, pertaining to eternal salvation. It talks about the heart. The heart. The heart. Even the word of God. He says that it is good for what? Uh, discerning the thoughts and intents of the heart. Hallelujah. Amen. So the Bible is trying to tell us that let us not, I mean, be carried away with diverse doctrines, with false teachings, with false doctrines. If we get carried away by all these doctrines, then it means that we are moving away from the grace. We are moving away from eternal salvation. That is why people are being deceived. There is one uh, church called the Latter Day Saints. They said that uh, because Christ died and he resurrected, it means that any sin that you do, even if you continue to do it, you are being forgiven. And and people because they because they, they give them money to establish business and whatsoever, they are taking people to help. And and most when you go to Ghana, most of the youth follow those people. They wear black trousers white stuff with time. All because of this false doctrine. Because it is encouraging people to sin. It is encouraging people to engage themselves in what? In bad acts. And these false doctrines are drawing them. Because it is, the problem is unbelief. They sit in the church but they do not believe whatever the Bible is saying. Their ears are itching for false words. Their ears are, are itching to hear certain prophecies, certain divination from prophets and whatsoever. So if he will get that circumstances, if he will get into that situation, that he is, his problem or two will be, able, will be solved. And it means that he is going to abandon the true word of God and follow false doctrines. Let us not be carried away with false doctrines, with buying of handkerchiefs, with buying of, I mean, I mean what? So, so. With, with buying of anointing oil. With buying of salt. Because they have seen that our heart does not yell for the, for the true word of God. Our heart yells for our, our problems to what? To move away. If the problems move away, it's because I am free. But you know one thing? When you go there and you receive all these things, when, it, when, when the, that problem vanishes, another problem what? Arises. It means that if they don't do that, you, you won't come back again. Then let's not be carried away by all these false doctrines. Just believe in Christ. Just believe in, just have faith in all these things. In everything that you do, let us stand still. Let us be strong. 
And let us have our spirit strengthened in the things of the Lord. Do not let someone call you or influence you negatively. 